Hi guys, what's going on? Aaron here. In today's video, we're going to be looking at SQL map. And to do that, we're going to be also using DVWA, which is a service which allows you to test your skills with different kind of uh, web application testing. So DVWA stands for DAM Vulnerability Web Application. Or da DAM Vulnerable Web Application. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using that. I've already set that up, so I'm not going to go through that in this video. So yeah, let's have a look at the website. So you've got all of these different options here. And as we obviously we're doing SQL map, we're going to be doing the SQL injection. So if we jump straight into it, we have a field here with a submit button. So we can go ahead and just type a, I don't know, let's type a one. And straight away, you can see it returns something. So if we were to do a quotation mark, it would give us an error. So we know it returns stuff and it will give us what we want and that there is some sort of uh, SQL injection available. So if we type, I've obviously already played around with this. So if I was to type two, you can see that there's loads of different IDs and this gives some sort of indication that there is a uh, database with different rows and columns there available. So if we use SQL map, we might be able to get a little bit more information in the, other than the ID, first name and surname. You never know, we might be able to get a password. So if we go over to a terminal and SQL map is already installed, so all you've got to do is SQL map that's H to show all of the options there. Oh, I got I went up too far. Spoiler alert. Um, so yeah, with SQL map, there is loads of different options that you can use. Um, they obviously all do different things. We'll go through one or two to get get through this. I won't go through all of them because obviously it will take ages, and I doubt we any of us have that sort of attention span. So what we're going to do is SQL map, and then we're going to do dash u that URL in quotation marks, and we're going to see what this does. It's not going to give us anything, but we're just going to see what it does so we can familiarize ourselves with it. So it tells us that the back end is a MySQL. Uh, server so as you can see there it also says that it's got a 302 redirect so if we, we can follow it it's not going to do anything because we haven't added something um, if we go to inspect element and we go to network and we refresh this and we go to the URL We can go down to the cookie, and what we could do is copy this. And if we paste that in here, what we want is this bit here. So if we do this again and do dash dash cookie equals that, and we do. that we should have a better chance and we don't <laughs> so this is what happens when you you do things once and then try and do it again you completely forget all the tiny little details that you need so here i missed um quotation marks on and i added a uh semicolon there when i shouldn't have and we needed to put quotation marks at the beginning here also. So now this will work. And here it goes into a little bit more detail, but still not a lot. But what we, we, we do have here is the exact version of what's running. So the F command is quite useful as it is the fingerprinting command. And it will go and grab all of the details from the website that you are investigating so 
now we have a few more details about the web server itself. Shall we have a look to see if we can find any details within the database? So we can try and see what the current database is called to see uh, what, who the current user is. And we'll try a few different things just to see what we can get back. So if we, I'm just going to, because we don't want to keep on typing this all the time, you just press up. And if we do dash dash current user, uh, if we do current DB, and if we do Do host name. So as you can see here, it will give us the current user, which is root. The database is DVWA, obviously, and the host name, which is Ubuntu, which we already knew from. Well, we didn't know the host name, but we knew what operating system. So now we have the current user. If we try and see if there's any hashes available for us to find a password. We can we can do that as well. So if we do up again, and if we do users dash dash password passwords and privileges and roles, this will reply back of all of those different sections. So if we just leave default, which is no, and we try yes, this will give us a lot of data. However, we want to go up to after it's finished, and we can see here that it hasn't given us any password hashes. However, it does tell us what the different roles have and like what uh, what they can do basically. So another thing to look out for is this bit here, which will tell us which is who is obviously administrator which is can be pretty useful depending on who you want to target you can also see what roles those particular users have we kind of know a little bit more about what users are on the database we haven't we don't really know what if there's any other information within the database we don't know if there's any tables or if there's any columns rows or anything like that so we can go ahead and do a simple dash dash tables and that will give us the tables of all the different users on on here so the one we're particularly interested in is the dvwa one obviously so you can see here it's got guest book and users now we know the tables let's have a look at columns so if we do columns again we have this section here which will tell us what information is in those columns and as you can see here interestingly there is a password section so who knows there might be hashes or the sql map might be able to brute force the hashes so we can do a dump which will dump all of the information on screen within those columns and again if we just do them and as you can see here what it has done let me just because it's more easily readable it has gone ahead and it has cracked them by a dictionary based attack so as you can see here it's gone ahead and found the hashes and done the passwords for us so you can see here that under each user it has given us a password along with their last name first name and when they're logged in and I actually haven't tried this but I don't know if we can like user ID for, like I, I believe that is that it like we, we now have the I don't think we can we can't log log in anywhere. Like what? What happens if I type Bob? Not much. What if I type Charlie? Nothing. Oh, so, so that's all we're meant to do. But at least 
we now will have. Was there an admin pass? Oh, there was password. Typical admin password. So yeah, now, now we know. We we have all of their username and passwords, and it was it's fairly simple. But once you've you've done it a few. It's fairly simple, however, it's difficult to remember all of the different commands and when you need to use them and stuff like that. It's a, it's a good automation tool. It's used fairly often, however, a lot of people will go ahead and go into more detail and do a manual SQL injection, as sometimes SQL map. As SQL map is limited to what it can do because you can't automate everything. But it's still a pretty good tool and it, it worked for this example and it gives you some sort of insight and some of the data that you can retrieve back. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, let us know why. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.